Hello fellow problem solvers, so today we're going to be reacting to this like very famous clip from X plus Y, the movie, which has over 40 million views at now watching this video on YouTube. It's like, wow! I'm just like curious. How? It's interesting. And we're going to be reacting to that. I am a former math competitor myself, got three bronze medals at the International Math Olympiad, two points away from silver every single time. And now without further ado, let's begin. 20 random cards are placed in a row. All face down. A move consists of turning a face down card face up and turning over the card immediately to the right. Show that no matter what the choice of cards to turn, this sequence of moves must terminate. Okay, so this is a very cool problem. Uh, I don't know what the context is, whether they are learning specific techniques but if you're just baseline decently well trained like you've read angles problem solving strategies or like any sort of basics combinatorics you are you're either learning that or you should be able to somewhat solve this like it's sort of intuitive like you have say 20 cards you might think okay instead of having 20 cards what if i had two cards and you know one is face up face down but the whole thing is that you have face up i think you, yeah, you turn them around then you have a face down card you flip it and like you can only make a certain number of moves and like you need to show that you can only make a certain number of moves here. So this is, there's many, many ways to approach this. Like right now I'm thinking of two different ways. And this is, I mean, it's a cool little practice problem that you can work with. And it's really, I think this one encapsulates very well, like what proving is. Nathan, hiding in the back won't help you. Would you like to come up and show us? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that man is a little bit of a bully. Hiding in the back will help you. This is. I've been trained by a lot of math, competitive math coaches. I've never heard somebody say something like that. <laughs> Hiding in the back won't save you. Won't save you from me. You need to come and solve this math problem now. Would you like to come up and... And it's also like, wait a second. Like, if you're learning something for the first time, you wouldn't just tell somebody, oh, come up and show us. Like, you should, pro it's, you should probably be... Already have learned this technique and applied it a bunch of times. Now you're, like, training somebody. But if it's a new problem that, like, they haven't say, seen this technique... Hint, it's called spoiler alert, it's in var mono variants here. Or induction, potentially. Uh, like, if you haven't seen that sort of technique and way of thinking about the problem, then just like having somebody come up, I mean, is a good sort of like a practice where we might spar with somebody. But this isn't the type of problem where you would just come up without any experience in induction or uh, mono variants and just like, solve it from the get-go like that's un that's not really how this works it's more of a conversation when i had competitive math um training like classes like this we would usually be given a problem such as this one and then we'd be given like okay try to solve this for the next five to ten minutes like we'd try to solve it ourselves and then the coach would ask us okay what are some ideas that people have anybody has any ideas like what should we do should we try this and then somebody says let's try this and then we try it or the coach is like, no, 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 like that probably won't work. Or we'll tell you why that doesn't work. But it's more of a back and forth sort of a dialogue as opposed to just come up. And, I mean, maybe they'll talk, you know, maybe they'll have a conversation, you know, hey, I'm thinking of doing this or that. But it's a short video. I don't think they'll be able to do that. So let's continue. I just don't like this coach now. I'm just like not a fan of this coach. Why would you do that? Why the silence? This is unnecessarily stressful. You don't need this amount of intensity. But it's a movie at the end of the day. Like so. to 
look at the cards, not as cards, but as uh, as numbers. Okay, so this is the general sort of idea that, you know, you have heads, actually what, like face up, face down cards, like nothing about them being face up or face down really matters here. What matters is, you know, there's two possible states they can be in. And it's the same, you could have cards, you could have coins which are heads and tails. Like there's many sorts of things that you can say here. Or you can also say you have numbers. You can have like, choose, you can either have a zero or a one. Like these are sort of identical ways of thinking about the same problems. And that's what mathematics really is. It's like you're abstracting from, okay, I have these specific cards. Some are heads and tails, tails and heads. You know, some are face up, face down, and you're abstracting it to, wait, Let's say if it's a face up, it's a one, or face down, it's a zero, or the opposite way, or the other way around. And that's like the first sort of thing he's doing, like abstracting away from the specifics and translating really the problem into something he can work with mathematically. We can call face down cards. One, face up cards, zero. Initially, there would be a sequence of ones, just the cards all face down, but after a while it would look something like that. Um. So, this is, this is just very cool. I, I, I like seeing these types of things. So, what he's done here is he's said, okay, so we have these cards that are in line, like these 20 cards in line. And now if we just like code this into like, just rename them in, instead of like face down and face up in terms of face down is a one, face up is a zero, then we will be given a sequence of zeros and ones. And now I think like the next step seems, actually there's two types of the next steps you can take here. Let's see which one he does. As we can see, that is a binary number. And a move that consists of turning a face down card, face up, and the card immediately to the right of it could be that a 1 followed by a 1 could turn into a 0 followed by a 0. That would be like that. Or it could be a 1 followed by a 0 turning into 0 followed by a 1. Very dramatic music. And he's now, what he's doing now is he's looking, okay, there are a finite number of possible moves that I can make, these sort of flips, and he's trying to look at all of them and what they will imply for this number, the sequence of ones and zeros. And now I think he's gonna go like with that sort of mono variant here. So let's see. In either case, we can see that the number in binary is strictly decreasing. And that means... Okay, now the professor starts talking, that means. So what he's doing there is he's seeing, okay, I have this beginning state, and every time I make a move, I am going to decrease the number. And so the logic here is like, let me just talk a bit about this invariance, mono variance thing, is whenever there's like a heuristic, a general problem solving heuristic that when you see a transformation happening or change happening, look for that that stays the same or that which changes in a controllable manner. Now, if you've now, once you take the cards and turn them into ones and zero, like face up, face down, turn them into ones and zeros. And then once you take those ones and zeros and think of this sequence as a binary number, now you talk about these transformations as things that really just make this number smaller, right? That is what you're doing now. You're just saying like, okay, if I pick a one and a zero, I'll, pick, I'll create a smaller number. If I have a one and one, a smaller number like every time I am decreasing this number. So that is what he's doing and now comes to grand reveal. But you can imagine, say you have this binary number, I mean, you can pause and now think, what, would, what will happen if at every point you have this number, a binary number and, and a positive integer, and every move in effect decreases that positive integer by a positive integer amount. Can that happen? And this in integer is always positive after every time it's decreased. So can this happen as long as you want? That's the question. And now let's see what our little boy Nathan answers. 
which means that the sequence must terminate. Because? Because you can't keep taking away from a positive integer without it turning negative. No. You can't. You definitely can't. Good work. Everyone? Good work. The, the coach is saying at the end, you can't, you definitely can't, you know, as, as though that was like some big revelation. But no, it's a, like that's the thing you can't, uh, not the only thing that would be left to do is actually to prove you can't. And really this depends on which level of you're competing at. And there's many ways that you could prove that you can't do this infinitely. Uh, you could really use the sort of the well-ordering principle or really the extremal principle say let's assume we can uh, actually you don't really you can do a proof by contradiction assume we can do this infinitely many times say at the beginning the number is n at every point we decrease the number by at least one then after n steps if we can continue doing this infinitely then we can do it at n times we'll get to a number that's zero at the most and or actually n plus one steps will get to the number that's minus one at the most. It's a contradiction. We could never get that because every move takes us from a positive integer to a positive one. So we will need to end before that it can't be infinite. And that's how you could like prove this sort of like assume it doesn't end. And, but here's the last part, the applause. I never got an applause after solving a problem like this. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's that I am not as smart as Nathan boy, but also no, this is a value judgment. Like if you're really preparing for the IMO here and this doesn't, it seems, it seems like they picked, they picked a good problem, really. Like they picked a problem that's like understandable, intuitive, that people at home can maybe solve, but they haven't really, like I don't know, like a solution this isn't something to applaud for because it's like basic techniques if you're at this level. And I'm assuming here, that you are preparing for the International Math Olympiad, which means you've probably seen invariants a lot. But anyways, that's just what I think. Let's see what happens next. So this girl is like eyeing Nathan now. I think that's a positive thing. Like, you know, if, if doing, if solving a problem gets you the attention of somebody you're interested in, I'm, I'm in full support of that. No, this was an, I think it's very inspirational the way they've made the video. Like it's a cool problem. It's the only part that's not sort of realistic is the applause. The, like maybe there's, there are coaches that are just like that. And no, but it's a, it's a cool little problem that they're solving the applause a bit too much. And it's cool that Nathan's like a bit more confident now because confidence is going to be very important for him when he tries to attempt like these more, like when he tries to attempt harder problems, like confidence will really, really be a big part of it. And it's not about and other problems that he will solve. This is a problem I had. I was decent at solving problems like this, where it was a technique that, oh, if you know the technique, like then bam, you solve it. But if it was a problem where you needed to think about it for two, three hours, I just lost concentration. I wasn't that, I wasn't that well trained in them. And that's and like, that's one of the big reasons why I had a bronze medal and not a silver one. Because to get a silver one, you will need to spend like maybe two, three hours on a problem, unless, you know, the stars align and the problem that you're that's like the second or fifth really really fits you and the first two the f number one and number four also fit you very well anyway that's it with this reaction video i hope you had some sort of interesting like discussion enjoyment out of this let me know what you think about the video like do you think this is a fair portrayal what's this movie trying to accomplish is this a cool clip i think it's a cool clip i really feel if i didn't stop and just listen to the music at the end i think i would feel really inspired like Doom, 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 doom. But that's just what I think. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below and let me know if you want me to react to more of these videos. And as always, thanks for problem solving.